Sounds good. TJ, uh, four and one as a starter here at Texas State. Uh, I've talked to you before after after a win, and, and you've said this is what you anticipated. Is it still what you anticipated when you look around, and not just your play, but the, the play of your team? Is this how you envisioned it in fall camp? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I came here to do one thing and one thing only. It, it was to win, right? Uh, I think. The work that we put in day in and day out, um, I think no one in this building has the expectation that we're going to lose. Um, that's not what, what we're going to do. Um, and, you know, it's just a true testament to what we put in uh, in the offseason this summer. And, you know, since I've been here, um, all we've done is work. You know, Coach Youth does a great job pushing us to the max in the weight room and stuff like that just to make sure we're, our bodies are ready. Our coaches do an amazing job pushing us to the, the limits mentally and physically in practice. So when we get on game day, get to game day, it's pretty easy for us. You know, last week you guys jumped ahead pretty pretty high, 42 to 10 in the first half. They started to get back into the game in the second half, and you know, finished them off in the fourth quarter. When they were starting that comeback, what's what's going through your mind? Are, are you as staying the same energy you were in the first half? Does it ramp up your energy? What, what happens when the other team is starting to come back? How do you how do you stave them off like you did? Yeah, I think the important thing in that in that in that situation is poise, right? Just being able to block out the negative, block out what's going on. Um, I, I do think we need to get better with taking care of the football. I think that was a, a, a big part in them, you know, having that run at the end of the game. But, um, you know, having poised as an offense, being able to, to come together as an offense and talk about what we need to do to finish the game. I think we, we do need to have more uh, enthusiasm in the second half, being up that much on the road, um, being able to sustain that lead and not put all the pressure on the defense to get continuous stops. Um, the defense played lights out, you know, in the first half, and then uh, the roles reversed, right? Uh, you know, defense kind of gave up some, some points at the end, and, and we got to do a better job getting the defense some break and some rest in the second half to where they can stay off the field. You know, there's there's a lot of crazy plays in that game, but probably the craziest one was was that dump off to Mahdi where he ran it 89 yards and then uh, was knocked out right before he crossed the end zone. Mm -hmm. Just walk us through that play. You're about to get sacked. You shuffle it off to Mahdi. You see him run over the back. Gets turned into a touchback for them. What, what, what were the roller coaster emotions going on in yeah, that play? Yeah, so I forgot what we had called, but uh, long story short, eyes downfield, didn't see anything open, tried to make something happen in the pocket. They got a hold to me, um, too big, too strong. Uh, got it to Ish. I was actually on the ground when he was returning it because I, you know, landed on my shoulder or whatever. So I was on the ground for a little bit. Didn't see him get the ball punched out. I thought he scored. And then I looked at my, I looked at Coach Leftwich and he was like, like in distraught. So I was like, what the hell happened? And uh, then he told me that it, they might call it a touchback. And I, so I looked up at the board and saw what happened. I was like, well, I mean, that's a hell of an effort by number seven. Ish has to do, uh, do a, great, a better job finishing in the end zone, having the ball in his outside hand. But, you know, stuff like that happens, right? Just in games like that, that's just the way the flow of the game was going. They had all the momentum. So everything in the second half that they were doing, they were they were doing it right. And, and so, um, you know, luckily we, we started off super fast and had a, a huge lead, but, you know, we have to do better. And I think that that's the adversity that Coach was talking about during fall camp that we're going to have to endure, um, especially being a first team that we all come together, a lot of transfers and stuff like that. Just being able to stick together um, and, and really pull out that win was very special for us. You know, TJ, this is kind of almost like a homecoming for you, going playing in Louisiana for the first time, you know, being at Texas State. Just what does it mean to you being going – back home to your home state and playing? Just another game to me. It's, it's another game I get to go out and prove to all the doubters that I am who I say I am. I, I am who I know I am and, and lead this team, right? I, my, my obligation as a captain on this team is to lead this team to victory. And I think um, myself, B. Holloway, and all the guys that's injured that that's no longer um, playing right now, our, our obligation to this team is to win, right? It, it's a lot of guys don't have that many opportunities left. And so we're going to do what we got to do to win. And, and that's my obligation to this team. So we can play in Canada. We can play in Louisiana. We can play in the backyard. I, I don't care what we play at. Put the ball down. Let's go. You know, something you touched on, you know, you and Brian are almost like the two captains that are kind of still standing. How do y'all, I guess, expand y'all's roles even further when like so many captains are, are kind of like falling out this year. Yeah, those guys are doing a hell of a job still being captains and being vocal on the sidelines and stuff like that, especially when we're playing home games and stuff like that. Um, out at practice, being vocal and, and doing things of that nature. Um, what I what I talked to the offense about was just having individual leaders in each position group, right? We need a we need a running back to step up and, and be a leader in the running back room. We need a, another O lineman in the O line room to to have their voice their opinion and step up in the O line room and and just just small things like that. You don't have to be a captain to be a leader, right? Just being able to to step in a role where you're needed 
and, and fulfill those roles. I think that's very important for us moving forward, and I think we're we're headed in the right di direction in, in that aspect. You know, looking at the film against Louisiana, just what are you going to be expecting from this defense? Um, they they have a lot of packages. They run a lot of different stuff. Um, really, a lot of three down and, and and three high safety looks. They they like to mismatch coverage and stuff like that. Um, nothing we haven't seen before, but it's something we definitely going to have to game plan for. Um, a, a lot of their packages, they like to match personnel. So, you know, whether we're in 10 personnel, 12 personnel, 11 personnel, we know what we're getting in each look. So being, you know, I think the key for me is just having my eyes in the right spot, um, going through it this whole week, um, watching extra film and, and diving deep into the playbook like I, like I already am with Coach Leftwich. Um, I think that's going to be a key for, for this offense to be successful this game. When you, when you were talking about that play earlier, you mentioned going up to Mac left, which on the sideline, which is kind of interesting, an offense coordinator on the sideline. A lot of times you see him in a booth. Yeah. Uh, what's that? What's that like? Being able to just your your OC is right there. You can just talk to him anytime. Has that been a benefit for you this season? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's been different for sure. Um, I, I kind of questioned it in fall camp when he told me he was going to be on the sideline, but I actually lo I, I love it. Right, we're, we're able to go faster. He don't have to echo the call from the press box to the sideline guy, from the sideline guy to us. Whatever he's thinking, he can just call. And I think that allows us to to have more tempo, go faster on the field, and stuff like that because he knows what he wants to call. And I'm so detailed in the playbook. I, I kind of know he, every situation what he wants to call. So sometimes all he has to give me is a formation and a certain motion, and I know what he's going to call and stuff like that. So have him on the sideline for that communication and, and being able to see what he see and he see what I see uh, from the sideline view is very important to me. You know, we were talking about some of the other captains going down. With no Nash Jones, there's been Trenton Scott, younger guy there at left tackle. Talk to me about, about Trenton Scott and how is he developing at that left tackle spot. Is he younger? Comes... How, how much younger? He's like a sophomore. Really? Okay. sophomore. Yeah, I didn't know that. So. Uh, no, nah, Trent is doing a hell of a job. He, he's he's stepping up big for us. Um, you know, he everybody has hiccups here and there, um, but he, he's doing a hell of a job. He's working his butt off, and I think um, this game you, you'll see a better Trent than you did last game for sure. You know, this offensive line. How are how are you uh, feeling behind them going in, going into the sixth game of the season? Almost at the halfway mark, so you play a lot of football with these Absolutely. guys. How are they uh, performed? For they, you? They've been phenomenal. We, we've been able to run the football, um, and, and that always takes pressure off the quarterback when we have an efficient run game. Um, that makes my job easy, right? All I have to do is get the ball to the right person. Um, they're, they're playing phenomenal, and, and my body feels good right now. So, I mean, as long as I, I stay healthy and stuff like that, I think they're doing a, a, an amazing job um, taking pressure off of me with the blitzes and stuff like that. Um, so, so Coach Shoemaker has a good group in them, and he's doing an amazing job coaching them up, and they're doing a hell of a job playing and, and listening to what he says. You, you've mentioned before how you and Malik Hornsby have a really good relationship. Uh, and he's even gotten to, to score the last three games in a row, kind of yeah. in, in the game with those touchdowns. Uh, what's it? What's it like seeing uh, kind of splitting time with him and seeing that other weapon that you have that he can come out? And how is y'all's relationship going? It's amazing. It's been the same since day one. Since we got here, um, you know, like like we said in, in fall camp, we were competing our butts off. Um, you know. Like Coach Kenny said, we both probably deserve to start, right? You know, we, we worked hard enough to to be the guy, um, and the the one two punch we have right now, I, I don't. A lot of people in the country can't do that, right? He he comes in at the end of the game, and when we need a big touchdown or a run or something like that, he he provides that for us, and he he provides that explosive quarterback run game that we can use at times um, to throw the defense off and, and add an extra hat in the run game with the running back and stuff like that. Um, you know, he he provides a lot of problems and. I wish he would play a little slot receiver so we can get him out on the perimeter and see him saw somebody up. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, later in the season. You know, we saw a lot of that jet sweep this last game, even on that two-point conversion in mm -hmm. the game. Maybe Malik could get in there and get him a little, little toss, Maybe. something like that. Yeah, that'll be something I have to talk to Coach Leftwich about.